Hi, my name is Jake Burns, and I was part of a team that recently completed a Cochrane Rapid Review on travel-related control measures to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Travel-related control measures can refer to a range of things, um, but what we were interested in specifically were travel restrictions that reduce cross-border international travel, so things like the full or partial closure of borders, uh, as well as the restriction of individuals or groups of people considered to be high risk, the most common example of which we've seen have been the restriction of people from specific countries. We were also interested in the quarantine of travelers, either of all travelers or of those coming from specific countries. And finally, we were interested in the screening of travelers. So things like the checking of symptoms, measuring temperature, and testing of departing and arriving travelers at airports, land borders, train station, things like this. As part of the systematic review, we were interested in whether these different travel-related control measures were effective. It's important to emphasize that these measures can have a range of impacts and a range of different outcomes that might be of interest to decision makers. Here we were interested in whether these measures led to a reduction in the number of cases of COVID-19, whether they led to a shift in the epidemic development. So for example, whether the start of the epidemic was delayed due to these measures. And finally, how many COVID-19 cases were detected because of these measures? To answer these questions, we searched for studies assessing multiple types of data. This ranged from more observational types of studies all the way to mathematical modeling studies both of which have advantages and disadvantages in the context of COVID-19. With regard to what we actually found, we identified, analyzed, and summarized 36 different studies investigating the impact of travel-related control measures. For travel restrictions that reduce cross-border international travel, we only found mathematical modeling studies. For studies assessing screening and or quarantine of travelers, we found a mix of observational and modeling studies. Given the substantial differences between included studies, both with regard to where these measures were implemented, how they were implemented, and what specifically the measure was, as well as how the studies were conducted, it makes it very difficult to draw general conclusions about the effectiveness. However, some trends we observed were, for example, that travel restrictions reducing cross-border travel, like the closure of borders or the restriction of travelers from high-risk areas, may be effective in containing COVID-19. Screening and subsequent testing of travelers with symptoms on its own is unlikely to be effective. However, if you combine it with other measures like quarantine, observation, and repeated testing, its effectiveness is likely to improve. But there's some important caveats to consider when considering these results. For a variety of reasons, like the methods applied in the included studies, as well as how complete of a picture this evidence base provides, the certainty of the evidence is quite low. This means that although some of the included studies were conducted very well, our confidence in the results overall is limited. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic is a moving target. Its progression is changing all the time and differentially in different countries. Where exactly a country is in this progression will be a really big factor in determining whether travel-related control measures are effective or not. Unfortunately, not many included studies reported detailed information on this, and even fewer studies investigated the role of the timing in the effectiveness of the travel-related control measure. This means that although some evidence does exist to help support decision makers, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. And as the pandemic progresses, researchers and decision makers need to work together to prioritize the most urgent and context-appropriate questions. Such a question could be, for example, given the current levels of COVID-19 transmission and given other public health measures in place, like mandates for social distancing or the wearing of masks, how can travel-related control measures contribute to avoiding a second wave of infections? And we hope that when we go to update this review in the near future, we'll find lots of new high-quality evidence addressing these questions. Thank you very much.